Hello and welcome to Mother Earth's Sacred Sites, Portals to Spiritual Awakening and Finding Your Heart's Desire. I'm Peggy Moore and your host and producer for the summit. I hope you have been enjoying the talks now that we're here on day three. Uh, I welcome you to the summit. Our intention is to help people who are on a spiritual path find the connection between the energy of the earth sacred sites and the advancement of one's spiritual path. Through the summit, I want you to discover how this ancient wisdom can guide and assist you in remembering your heart's desire, your soul's mission. Then hopefully you allow that energetic connection to help you discern how to live to your highest potential. Today, we're going to talk about Mother Earth in Egypt and ancient Egypt and the energetic impact it continues to have on today's modern Egypt and the people who go to visit Egypt. In a few minutes, I'll introduce you to today's speaker, Majib Nasser. But first, I want to give you a little background on my journey with Egypt. You've heard uh, other speakers by this point talk about noticing your pull to specific sites. My pull to Egypt began as a young child drooling over encyclopedias, reading whatever I could find about Egypt. My past life memories of Egypt were triggered in when I was in my 20s, when I read Elizabeth Hayek's book, Initiation, and later, Om Seti's Egypt. I'll skip the long story about what took me so long to get to Egypt, but finally, I arrived in 2018 with excitement and anticipation about this new chapter in my travels. To this point, Ireland had been my strongest pull, and I've been there five times. I've been to other countries, but Ireland pulled me the strongest. For me, Ireland is a beautiful, soft goddess. And when I, when I came to Ireland, she welcomed me with open arms and folded me into the mother energy of the sacred land. When I stepped off the plane in Egypt, once again, I had the experience of the goddess of the land greeting me. But the goddess Egypt did not softly float to me. But instead, she stomped her way to me and demanded, what took you so long? I have you now, and I will never let you go. So began my journey in Egypt. At this point, I've presented several presentations on Egypt's sacred sites. In October, I'm scheduled to give a three-day workshop on Egyptian goddesses as a part of um, the Unitarian Women's Spirit, Women's Spirit Conference. And I'll tell you more about those things, you know, in a future newsletter if you've signed up on, on my website to get that kind of information. On my first trip to Egypt in 2018, I met two amazing Egyptian guides, and I've spent time with, with them on each return trip to Egypt. In January 2020, I led a spiritual journey to Egypt with these two Egyptian guides, Abeloff and Maju. Our journey included them teaching us about temples uh, as they read the hieroglyphs. Throughout the tour, we incorporated meditation, ceremony, Quranic healings, sacred dance, and more. And we hope to lead another tour, perhaps next year. But today, my guest is one of those guides, Majub Nasser. Technology in Egypt has its challenges, so we've created a slideshow to accompany Majub's audio interview. So first, let me introduce him to you. This is Majub Nasser, and the title of his talk is Egypt's Energetic Experience. Majub guides spiritual seekers and tourists throughout the ancient sites of, of Egypt. He lives in Luxor, Egypt. And, which is the heart of ancient Thebes. Um, he studied at Manina University in the Faculty of Tourism and Hotels Guidance Department. The city of Mina is actually south of Cairo and in ancient times was called the City of the Sun uh, for the King of Akhenaten. 
as Majub leads people to these ancient sites, he reads and interprets the hieroglyphs from the walls of the temples. Can you imagine reading the symbols? That's what he does. His words echo through the long ago times of ancient Egypt. So he reads hieroglyph, he speaks fluent English, Spanish, German, and of course, Egyptian Arabic. So this is Maju, our speaker for today. This is Majub and one of the other uh, leaders of the tour, April Lilly, who was the Sacred Circle Dance Instructor, and this was on our, our January 2020 tour. This is a picture of April and Majub and our other guide, Abeloff. I didn't seem to get in any of the pictures. I was running around doing whatever on the tour, but this is, um, these are the folks that we were with on that tour. So I'd like to, um, to start with the first question for Majub. Majub, you have lived in Egypt all your life. How do you experience the energy of the ancient sites? Very, very easy. Egypt is one of the lands of the heavens as said the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians, they chose this land to be their own kingdom. And they chose the Nile as the reflection of the Milky Way. So, Egypt have, have not only the pharaonic or the pharaoh's culture, but also have another and other cultures. All these cultures and all these places make a very good mix. A very good mix of what? Of finding the spiritual energy here in Egypt. So, the Egyptian temples were placed strategically strategically along the Nile to correspond with the major chakras of our energy system that exist along this, the backbone. So the journey from, for example, journey from Aswan to Heliopolis is taking through these sites and can provide healing of chakras as is going so flow with the spirit of the night. Also, uh, the places of the ancient Egyptians is like, uh, it's not like other, it's, it's not connected. The places of Egypt, it's like, like we say, from a swan, to Cairo or from Aswan to Heliopolis, all these places are connected as a chain. So I want to say that the experience someone can find has power and has a spirit here in Egypt is very, very, very easy. Because if you don't find it here, you will find it there. Because being inside the temples and being inside the chambers and being inside the, the, the rooms of the temples and in front of the walls, front of the pyramids, front of the sphinx, in front of the Nile, in front of the mosques, in front of any place here in Egypt, any historical place here in Egypt, someone will find his bath and his spiritual flow that are seeking of or searching for. So, for example, we can say Karnak Temple. Karnak Temple is the house of the God. 
Carmack Temple is the house of the god, the major god, Amun-Ra. Inside this temple and about the, under the uh, historical background and the pharaohs that started to build and they make a very huge walls and very tall towers, but the small details that shows us the symbols. This is the places and this is the stuff that anyone can search for. The symbolism. The symbolism of the hieroglyphic is the secret of the people who are watching and who are searching for the spiritual power and energy here in Egypt. So, the Egyptian, also the ancient Egyptian, they started to make the temples and the monuments were designed and built and consecrated by an initiated priesthood of adepts through a magical rites that have been and still are. One of this called Ka. Ka is the field of the intelligence, sometimes referred to in a in Bible as etheric double, the etheric double. So the direct transmission, the direct transmission and the wisdom come from this. So inside the Egyptian temples, Egyptian temples, there were a very small and very huge numbers, huge numbers of these statues, because these statues called the Ka, the etheric double, the transmission of wisdom, transmission of feelings, transmission of our eyes. This is what inside the ancient Egyptian temples. Also, inside the ancient Egyptian temples, there, there is a very huge text and documents that are talking to the knowledge of the power and the knowledge of the spiritual path, knowledge of cry the ancient Egyptian, they show us how the cry, how someone when he cry, he will reflect the path and reflects uh, or transmit, transmitting what inside his heart. So the ancient Egyptians, they started to tell us and show us how the heart and how we cry, how we love, how we how we can look anything through the documents and the texts that are decorating the walls and the walls of the temples, the walls of the sanctuaries, the walls of the tombs also. So, Maju, does the energy change from one ancient site to another, such as from one pyramid, to another or the difference of going from a pyramid to a um a temple uh, sure the places of the ancient egyptian temples as we said is like a chain a chain all connected but not in one place so we have here the map of Egypt. We have the north, the south, east, west. So if we start through, we start according to the through or the flow of the Nile from the south to the north, we will start by Aswan. Aswan, then Edfu, then Luxor, Abydos, Tal Amarna, and then Heliopolis and Saqqara, and then Giza, and then 
Cairo, and then Alexandria. So, the backbone of the human being, the backbone of Egypt is the Nile. And as we said, the temples are con constructed around the Nile according to the human chakras. For example, if we said Aswan is the base chakra, and then we start moving, heading to the north, Komombo, called the navel chakra, and then Edfu, solar plexus chakra, and then Sips or Luxo, heart chakra, and then Amarna or Abydos, called throat chakra, and then Giza, and the Sphinx called the third eye chakra, Heliopolis called the chakra clouds. That means Heliopolis and Cairo and Alexandria. So all these places, if we count inside of its places or inside of its uh, main places, there is hundred or thousand places in a different sizes. So, Komombo or Sips Luxor, Luxor have hundred or, or almost thousands of places that can anyone find him himself and can find the the path and the peace of the spiritual um, feeling inside the temples. We have here Karnak and Luxor and Valley of the King and temples and the funeral temples. All these places can help. So if we go to Abydos called the Throat Chakra, this Throat Chakra, because Abydos is a place that makes the God and the sacred body of the God Osiris, God of the heaven, God of the fertility of the Nile, go to the underworld. And before going to the underworld, he wanted to be ensured that the underworld is secure. So he helped and he was helped by the gods. The gods start to make some uh, spiritual, spiritual um, practicing or spiritual uh, formulas. This spiritual formulas help the god Osiris to go through the darkness and the shadow of the underworld very safe. And this special places that the throat or the mouth or the voice. So there in Abydos, we can see and we can say, anyone can go there and can test and make a very good experience through her voice, because the voice there will be clear because anyone there in Abydos will be inside the place of the truth. The place of the truth, this is the place and the walls and the temple that full of huge documents and texts that help anyone to have a very clear voice and very health root throat. This clear voice will help someone to go and to get rid of the bad and the black and the darkness of the heart of anyone. So when the gods started to help the god Osiris, 
they wanted to get rid of his darkness and his bad uh, background inside his soul or his spirit so he will talk clearly to the gods of the underworld so we called then the uh, abydos at the throat chakra or the voice chakra for example if we see the giza or the sphinx called the third eye chakra third eye chakra this is the third eye of the goddess who are protecting the nile the nile as you said is the reflection of the milky way according to the ancient egyptians so the ancient egyptians they make a very good protection to protect the nile the nile was very good protected by the ancient egyptians and also the river nile was honored by the ancient egyptian to be at the middle between the temples and between the uh, between the um, uh, sacred places so uh, all i want to say that there is a difference yes there is a difference between a temple to the other between a place to the other but the difference is not for a big difference it's just a little difference and all is connected that means someone goes from aswan to the north heading from south to the north will find a very huge peace inside of himself and will find a very huge power and spiritual power inside himself because he will have a very good treatment of a spiritual uh, practicing this in its parts from Aswan to Cairo, from Aswan to the north. Majib, you've seen many visitors to the pyramids and the temples. Some people come as tourists interested in historical sites others come with spiritual intentions do you see or feel a difference in how these two groups of people um, react to the sites here in egypt there is many tourists it's very hard to find what is the purpose but from their acting, anyone can see what kind of tourist is it. So, I wanted to say the regular tourists and the spiritual path or the spiritual persons or the people who are looking and seeking, seeking for the peace of their own hearts. The ancients, Egyptians, also they mentioned that. They mentioned all what we are saying. They mentioned what we have uh, doing, done right now through the ceremonies, through the parties, through the religious places from day to day. So, the ancients or the tourists right now, tourists with a tripod, with camera, looking and seeing and taking picture here and here and here, and listening to the guide, listening to the man, so cannot feel this place. The places, the Egyptian places, can be felt, 
can be filled by the heart. People and the tourists of the spiritual path, they react as crying. Crying have two ways, clear crying or disappear crying. The crying that shows us, but the two, the two types called crying. When someone cry, that means he is cleaning his heart. So the spiritual path and the spiritual people who are coming searching, they react by crying. Two types. What they do? Some of them they dance, some of them they take their hands, some of them they stare on the walls, some of them they start to pray. So every or each activity have its own meaning, but the meaning of the heart is the same. The meaning and the heart and the feeling of the past and the peace, peace inside the heart is the same. The spiritual people come here to Egypt and they act as dance because dance is make the spirit to be joy. The joy of the spirit is the dance. People like that also they react here as pray. The pray or praying in general is the spirit itself. People come and stare looking directly to the places without moving. Also, this helped too much, but all if we can concentrate and if we can say and we can feel, we will see all of that make and help the heart. The heart is the most important element that can be created to the human being by the past. The regular tourists come without no and any kind of uh, praying, any kind of feeling, any kind of anything here. Just come taking some pictures and that's it. The spiritual also, they did not feel, but they started to know. And the spiritual people who come here also, they started and they have a very good background about the Egyptian history. And it's very, very important. So a very big... So when the ancient Egyptians worshipped, and held ceremony in temples, they, they may have had uh, a spiritual experience. Now, we no longer go to these ancient sites uh, or worship in the ancient sites, but Majub, do you think that the temples still have an energy or a vibration that the visitors there today can, uh, can feel? The ancient temples and the ancient sites right now in whole Egypt, they have a special effect. No one can be inside a temple or inside a hysterical site of the ancient Egyptians No one can feel bad inside all, all of the sites. Inside temples, inside tombs, inside any kind of the ancient Egyptians because this place and this 
buildings as these timbers were constructed and built according to a special calculating and astrological calculation of the stars and of the sky with the earth. So also we can see that between the years 60 to 70, all the monuments of Aswan have been affected by the water because of the construction of the high dam. And they had to reconstruct and trans, uh, transporting, they wanted to transport the temple of Philae. And the German delegation and the German crew who started to make this mission happen, they take 5,000 sky photo just to ensure that the temple will be relocated in its new place according to its exact ancient directions and ancient orientation. It was very, very important. So the temples of Egypt right now have unusual places and unusual feelings inside just and vibrations and this helped too much of the people of all the humans especially the people who are looking for the spiritual path and the spiritual peace here in Egypt. So what advice do you have for people traveling to the ancient uh, sites in Egypt? Are there specific sites that you recommend more than others? My advice to the people who are traveling to the ancient sites of Egypt that they have to come. Anyone feel getting lost, I promise, will find himself here in Egypt. Being in Egypt, it's not getting from the doors to the doors, but getting here inside the temples will help the people to get from heart to heart. These temples will help to get rid of the darkness to see the light. This light will be the leader of our life. The life that was appreciated by the ancient Egyptians and also getting here to Egypt will help to get the transmission of the wisdom feeling unusual feel here in Egypt that help too much. And I will not recommend a specific places but we can say all Egypt like a chain, black, like a backbone. So it will help here, but it will not help there, but it will, it will help. So Dandera, like Abydos, like Luxor, but no one can feel the same. For me, I can feel my peace and Luxor. Someone else can feel in Aswan. Someone else in Dendera. Someone else in Abydos. So all the places are uh, connected and have the same purpose. 
but how we can feel and how this transmission can touch our heart it's it's a very important thing the highly recommendation of the red pyramid and the highly recommendation of abydos the highly recommendation of philae and the symbol this help too much so all the temples have the same but this mentioned temples have too much more than others and i hope that i can find another places that i can recommend and the life and the temples and the sites of egypt all can be built and can be dead according to a special order and a special uh, specific spiritual order by the ancient egyptian experts Oh, Majib, this has been wonderful. I wish that we could have had you on camera um, to see you through this, but I think the slideshow has been um, a, a beautiful addition to, to your words as we go through the, the process. And how, the way that we want to end this session on Egypt, um, I have received a, uh, a meditation uh, involving the Egyptian goddesses. Um, and so I'd like to, to play this um, meditation for you. I have just a few slides that will accompany it. So if you would like to see the, the pictures as we go through the various uh, chakras, this is the Egyptian goddesses related to each of the chakras. And you can... Um, can look at the slides and see that process if you would like to, or you can close your eyes as you go through this meditation. And also, um, this meditation is the gift uh, from Majib's talk. So when you go to his speaker page, you will be able to download uh, the audio copy of, of this meditation. And there's music in the background by Linda Go, who is one of the other speakers on the summit, and I will give you uh, a link to to get this meditation, but also I will give you a, uh, a link if you are interested in purchasing any of her other music. Uh, so without delay, we'll, we'll start into this meditation and the slideshow that goes with it. This is called the Egyptian Goddess Meditation. Chakra meditation with the Egyptian goddesses. Opening our hands, becoming one with the divine. Moving to the root chakra. The goddess Mat guides us through the energies of the root chakra. The goddess of balance, of truth, of justice, of order, of wisdom. These attributes are the structure of creation. And without the balance of mind, we would live in chaos. Mahat encourages us to pay attention to our every thought, our every word, our every deed, to live our lives according to spiritual law, and dwell for a moment with Mahat at the root chakra. And at the Gona Chakra, Sekhmet meets us 
she comes to us to guide us through the energies of the gonad, the creativity, the life-giving force, the protection of the mother and the child. Sekhmet, the fierce warrior, the fierce protector, the loving one, who guides us toward introspection, who guides us toward learning how to dwell in the world of creativity, in the world of will, opening ourselves to the divine will rather than our own. We thank you, Sekhmet, for standing with us, for carrying us when we cannot carry ourselves, for teaching us to stand strong. And at the solar plexus dwells Hathor, the goddess of love and laughter and music and dance and rhythm. Our emotional center. She's there. She's there to lift us up. To let us see the light. She's there to help us embody our strength, our beauty. Hathor has the symbol of a mirror and a sistrum. And the mirror is to show us our true image, our true self to help us highlight our strengths and individual power. And she beats the system to shake things up, to help us identify who we are, to let go of, of the stagnation so that we can step forth, dwell with that tour in the solar plexus. And at the heart, Isis comes. Isis with her magic and her healing, her strength and her power, her compassion and her perseverance. She is the embodiment of the alchemical transformation. She teaches us how to use our gifts to create the life we came here to express. To help us let go and step forward. To help us use the magic of nature so that we can transform our dreams into reality. Isis, the goddess of our hearts, the goddess to lead us forward to stand up as warriors of the heart, remembering who we are. And we rise to the throat chakra with the goddess Tefnu. The goddess of creation, Tefnu and her partner Shu. Tefnu is moisture, Shu is heat. And through that, the sound of creation came about. Tefnu of moisture, of liquid, of the water above heaven. She pours water to sustain our souls as we journey from this world to the other world. 
and back again. The Uraeus is at her brow, where she and Sekhmet merge into one from the root to the throat to the brow. Tafnut. Adding the moisture to the air so that we may speak our truth and be one with the divine. And at the brow is the eye of Horus, the bridge between the celestial world and the human world. The eye of Horus. It helps us see, see the true world, see the other side while we stand in the earthly world to observe the flight of our dreams, to hear the ancient voice within us as the brow connects to the ears and we hear with the vision of the eye of Horus. So we feel within the memory of who we are. And to the crown, at the crown is the solar disk, the solar disk of Ra, the solar disk connecting us to the divine, the solar light of the oneness, the atom, the oneness of all, brought creation from the state of knowing, knowing the unformed, the undefined energy, bringing it into matter for us to dwell for us to look at the divine light, at the divine solar light that dwells above our heads and to become one with that light. So we raise our hands to our heart and say thank you to the aspects, the manifestations of the goddesses. We say thank you for our awareness to take those within ourselves. We say thank you for remembering who we are. And we lift our hands, palms together, above the top of our heads with our hands in the center of the solar disk. And we draw those hands apart with our arms up and let our palms point toward the earth. And we roll those palms up, pointing upward above the tops of our heads. And we bring those hands together, touching, grounding, dropping the base of our hands to the tops of our heads, dropping our hands behind our neck, opening our palms, resting on our shoulders, activating the heart, the throat, the brow, and lifting those hands off our shoulders, touching the little fingers, the ring finger, the middle finger, the forefinger, the thumbs, and bringing the palms together, lifting above our heads, dropping our hands down through the brow, through the throat, to the heart, and again saying thank you. Thank you so much for being with us with this session. Many blessings to each of you.